Now, in this video, I wanted to talk about the behavioral reactions of men to what is essentially a flawed societal model based on what I can only say is it seems to be a, a model harking back to the late uh, Pleistocene, if I'm, if, if I'm being generous. So let, let's say 10,000 years ago, we're, we're living in a, in a societal model with 21st century technology and uh, uh, a 10,000-year-old behavioral model in place. Um, and I want to talk about some of the reactions of men to this model. That is to say, what happens to individuals, uh, individual males and groups of males who grow up in a society that despises them, that attributes no person to them, and essentially sees them as uh, cheap labor or, or slave labor or take your pick. Probably cheap labor, I mean, after all, you do earn money usually. At proper slavery, slavery probably would be the right term. And to illustrate this point, I want to talk about um, the country in Asia, once again, that I'm most familiar with, South Korea. Now, uh, many people, particularly Western men, uh, entertain the flawed notion that, particularly with regards to dating and women, and I made a video a while back about this, that uh, Asia, certain Asian countries, represent some paradise where the women, well, aren't quite like Western women. All I can say is see Brifold's Law, um, women are women. But that's not what I really wanted to talk about. Um, but I knew that might potentially come up. South Korean society, um, just a little background, uh, in what many ways it's very impressive because uh, after the Korean War, they really rebuilt the place incredibly quickly, and now they're at the very least one of the top ten, depending on how you count economies of the world, and considering its size, considering almost ultimate level of destruction that uh, took place there some decades ago, uh, it's pretty impressive. But um, there are certain consequences to this, and uh, like it or not, uh, we, we actually in the West have somewhat more freedom, particularly the male. I mean, men going their own way can, for the most part, go their own way. Yes, we are the object of ridicule and scorn. And yes, uh, the insults rarely stop, and you're often met with misunderstanding at the very least, in the best case scenario, and uh, outright hatred and, uh, and ostracization, uh, the other end of uh, the extreme spectrum. But... So South Korean society is a society based on collectivism and social cohesion at all costs. And I wanted to talk about reactions, reactions to stress put on, on the male in a in, in modern society, but in a modern society it's essentially based on a, as I said, a model of the place the Pleistocene. I mean, that, that, that it, and the fact, the main point I'm trying to make is that men are not happy. One particular phenomenon, that actually two I'll talk about, but one I want to talk about is so-called computer game addiction. Now, this hits home, close to home, because I, on occasion, have might have fallen into that category. Every now and then I, I get into these bouts where I'm playing way too much, and the only thing I manage to do is get my, my, uh, my work done so I can earn a bit of money. And uh, But what you see in South Korea, it's, it's really extreme. People, particularly young boys, but also young men, and even older men, will spend all their days in what are called PC rooms, uh, PC bang in, in, in Korean. And this happens usually after school or after work. And they spend their entire time there. It's quite cheap, it's enjoyable, and they get to play with their friends. Um, there have been such extreme cases where men actually die doing it. because They forget to eat, they forget to consume fluids and what have you. It's not that common, but it's happened. Why am I talking about this? Well, it's very clear that in a society of extreme collectivist cohesion that demands that of the, of the male and of, of people in general, that you're going to end up with extreme reactions to that sort of behavior. If your purpose in life in a society is merely to serve the collective, to work the entire time, and to slavish, slavishly uh, obey the edicts of your boss, whether it be drinking late at night when you don't feel like it, staying in the office when you don't feel like it, way past the hours that you're required to do so, in theory at least, 
um, that you're going to end up with some extreme behavior. And this so-called, so -called, I'll say, computer game addiction um, is one of those reactions. Um, on, a, on, a, on the other end, you have you know young men or teenagers, boys, doing this as well. And that is also a commentary and a reaction to a society that doesn't really value them, which values rote learning, there's not much creativity there, and they're sort of simply forced into doing things. And it's, it's no wonder that they seek avenues of escapism. And you can find the same thing in the West in small, smaller pockets. Men, uh, and I, as I said, I've been guilty of this as well, we will seek avenues of escape. And the interesting thing in South Korea, of course, is they have so-called rehabilitation camps where you, know, you try to reintegrate these uh, young men and teenagers and what have you into society. I, I think it generally doesn't work. And the, the problem is that what they are doing, what people in general have failed to do, is they're not connecting the dots. They don't, they don't see a cause and effect, and they're not looking for causal links. The same thing could be said for... Uh, the whole herbivore men movement, although it certainly has, it's a different manifestation, but the very fact that you have this kind of escapist, re, uh, escapist reaction to a societal model that, that, that really places no value on, uh, on male happiness, and yet Korean women, even though a, a greater number of them are housewives in the West, Western women are highly, lead highly pampered lives and enjoy themselves whilst men are expected to pull in whatever hours they're required, you know, be it 50 to 100, doesn't really matter. Uh, another phenomenon you see quite often there is, it's not as well, docu as well documented as it is in the West, is uh, rampant alcoholism. It's, it's, an, it's incredible. And is it any wonder that, I mean, people turn to all kinds of abuses, be it computer game addiction or substance abuse, when, when they're not content with uh, certain aspects of their lives. And when on a massive scale, men are simply relegated to the role of worker drones, where I think worker drone is the best term, you're going to see this. Um, once again, people are not looking for a cause and effect. I made a video a while back on the accolades of fantasy. And the fact is that oftentimes, those accolades, the rewards you win in a, what it essentially amounts to a fantasy, something that's not that's detached to reality, from reality, those rewards are far greater than what we have um, in the West, or sorry, in reality, in the West and in the East. Because um, quite frankly, being a worker drone, I don't know what the reward is there. And I think this begs a further question, as you know, men going our own way, and I'm not going to lie, I'm still trying to figure out what's going on with my life. Um, interestingly enough, I don't want to get too, too much into a tangent, but um, the, al the alternatives are so far and few between. Uh, I was at work the other day, and uh, I'm fairly well acquainted with my boss, and he is a, uh, I would say, a man who's wholesale bought into the societal model of, of so-called success. I was thinking about making a separate video on this whole success thing, but we all know what that really means when you're successful. Always depend on the recognition and acknowledgement of others, but primarily women, and always chasing something that uh, will constantly be tested and measured. And I was criticized for not having, uh, lacking such concrete goals and not or not relentlessly pursuing success. Well, you know, that, the point is that um, if you don't buy into the worker drone model, there's not a whole lot left for you to do. I mean, yes, you can pursue your hobbies, um, but I think many of us, and I'm not going to lie, I feel myself afflicted by this as well, uh, find ourselves in a certain role of rolelessness, as it were. Um, you, know, you have your hobbies, but society clearly doesn't wish for your happiness. In a society, be it the East or the West, where your personhood has no value, where, as man, woman, myth has said, you are reduced to human doings as opposed to human beings, and you recognize that. And let's face it, truth is infectious. When you realize these things, and when you beyond realizing them, when you acknowledge them and finally internalize them to the point of no return where you can no longer look back, you sort of peel the veil uh, back and it's, it's all there in front of you, you can't go back. 
and what's left? Um, well, I'd like to, my channel, this channel, what I'm doing here is very important to me. I, I want to try to help my fellow men. That's my purpose in doing this. Um, but I think I've talked to other men going their own way, and, and I know myself that we're a lot, many of us are, um, are beset by a sense of purposelessness. Uh, and, and, and the alternative, however, is not to, as, as some have just suggested, I've heard, to, you know, put the veil back on and go back to being a worker drone. Um, the moments in my life when I, I did uh, fit that role, uh, I think I was even more dissatisfied with that than I am. In fact, no, I certainly was. So, but these extreme reactions of escapism, whether it's in substances, computer addiction, whatever, um, also depression, which is something that people don't talk about amongst men. I mean, I don't know how many times you hear about postpartum depression, pregnancy-related depression, women are most more likely, are more likely to be affected by depression than men. Now, I need to research the statistics on that, but I find that highly unlikely, considering the pampered role that uh, women are fitted with in society, the fact that societal institutions are essentially there to take care of them. I find it highly, highly doubtful that more women uh, become seriously depressed than men. Now, it can be that men are less inclined to discuss their depression. I've been depressed on numerous occasions in my life, not going to lie. That could be a possibility, but I simply don't buy the idea that women, per se, are more inclined. I think, as it stands, men would, would perforce, um, have to be more, uh, more inclined towards that, because everything is set up basically against us. Um, there might be some men that are satisfied with the worker drone role. But, you know, in a society, and I mentioned South Korea in particular because it is a society of extremes, of extreme social cohesion based on neo-Confucianistic principles, which I won't discuss here. But you see, alcoholism is rampant. Um, it, it, it's, it's part of work culture. Your boss will demand that you, you engage in drinking activities after work when you perhaps would prefer to go home. Um, hard liquor, mind you, um, usually. Uh, even though it's not as well documented, you see it all the time. You can see the, the alcoholism, the drunkenness. And yes, you have this com computer game, game addiction, which is far more pronounced there than it is here um, in the West. And these are, the, these are very extreme reactions to a very extreme form of emasculation and societal oppression of men. And it, it's, very, it's illustrative of, of, a, of the general principle that we are, we are living in a societal model that is far, 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 far too antiquated. Even though the technology is, you know, moved light years ahead of uh, the Pleistocene, <laughs> we're still stuck there. And it's important to, to look at the cause and effect. Um, people, people don't do it. And that's why you have these rehabilitation camps. Uh, you know, in these camps, uh, young men and boys are Required, they're not they're not allowed access to computers anymore. Which, if you were both going by the principles of those who initiated, who started these camps, I guess it makes sense. And um, but they don't find any satisfaction in that because the roles they're afforded in society are not very satisfying. Additionally, uh, in South Korea, there's immense pressure um, to do very well if you don't go to a top two, three, top tier university, and by that I mean maybe five universities in, in, in the country, you essentially have no chance at, it, at acquiring a job later, more pressure put on men. That's not the case with women, of course. Women, they marry, they engage in hypergamy. Um, so it's immense, immense pressure uh, on, on men there. And you see the immense and extreme reactions to that pressure. And uh, I think all of us, need to ask men going our own, our own way and need to ask ourselves what what is there left for us i mean yes we have our individual hobbies and we have our individual pursuits and those of us who say have a youtube channel and feel that they're making a positive contribution that's a good thing but um i've, I've found personally that you 
when you're when you're up against the rest of society when you try to explain yourself i'm talking about real life behind enemy lines as it were you're you're met with so much uh either disbelief or scorn or you know, I tried to explain to my boss and my boss and colleagues my position on things to a certain extent. I, they looked at me like I had five heads, so I just kept quiet and continued doing my work. There's no point in uh, burning bridges there. Well, I think we really, as a, on a global scale, I don't. We need to look at the situation of men and, and why we we end up in the situations we do. Um, it's very it's very clear, for example, as a, that in, in current physical health issues, men are not as well taken care of as, as women. Even though, for example, prostate cancer is uh, much deadlier to men than breast cancer is to women, it goes to follow. It goes. It would follow, I think, and I'd have to do the research on this. That mental health issues are quite similar. Um, I, I can't imagine why they wouldn't be. So we really need to examine cause and effect. And the, the fact is that um, if society requires the worker drone model of the male, and this role is simply not, I don't, I don't think it ever was satisfying. It might be argued for that at some point in time, the worker drone model was necessary. It certainly isn't anymore. Um, and it's, it does, it, it's a total disservice to men and it, it makes us miserable. So, so what, what's left? Um, eventually, we might all be dead by that time most likely. Eventually, society will need to rethink the worker drone model, um, and women will need to rethink the whole idea of male exploitation for their own pleasure and benefit. Because, quite frankly, um, it doesn't matter. The cause and effect is there as well. If, if we as individuals are dissatisfied, even if we haven't found our quote-unquote path, and we detach ourselves from the worker drone model and more and more men do it, they're going to run out of worker drones. The pool of worker drones will shrink, and the basis for their societal structure will uh, shrink as well, and inevitably it will implode, eventually. That might take quite some time. But with each video I make, with each, uh, with each man who realizes his lot in life, and his, and his lot in life, unfortunately, is, at least in the eyes of, of women in society, that of a worker drone who exists to serve the collective pressure, uh, the collective pleasure of women and, and, and those who, and say, manginas and the rest of their servants. Well, with each man I, I reach and, and every other MRA and man going his own way reaches, the pool will shrink. So we, we are on, on a course of destruction. We're sort of on a, uh, in a we're in a bus and we're heading towards the cliff. And uh, it doesn't seem like the people who aren't aware of who, who are running the show care very much about it. Um, but the, the suicide rates, for example, in, in South Korea are, are mostly men, mind you, of course, are, are staggering. They're alternatively in the top one, two, or three in the world, in the top uh, spots. That's just as an example. We all know that male suicide rates are much higher in general than females. You know, if you actually care, if the people out there, a few women who watch my channel, if and the people who are running the show, as it were, if you actually cared about uh, male lives, you would investigate that. But it's clearly not the case. Um, but I can assure you, those those of you who are the enemy, who are on the other side, and there are enemies. We we do have enemies, and those who refuse to acknowledge our personhood, to if refuse to acknowledge us as anything but worker drones, a collection of mechanical doings who exist to serve the pleasure of others. Um, it doesn't matter if we cannot find a specific role to fit into. As I said, as the numbers grow, the collective will implode. Uh, you will lose the battle eventually, and I'm convinced of that. Um, and you can see it. You can even, you, and the fact is, you can even see it in the men who who are not completely cognitive of these, uh, cognizant of these issues. The man who turns to alcoholism, to computer addiction, to anything else, there is a deep dissatisfaction in his soul, in his mind, and he's perhaps pursuing the false avenue. That he's going down the wrong path to address that. But that deep dissatisfaction is the spark. It's the spark that's, that has led all of us down this path 
the recognition of our unfortunate lot in this disgusting society. And even if it leads to these rather extreme escapist measures, eventually um, people will come around and full cognizance will be attained on the part of most men, if not all men. We're all waking up. And whether we're individually happy or we found our specific lot in life outside the worker drone model, that is important on an individual individual basis. But the more men, the more the more the men leave the worker drone model, a model based on something that, as I said, if I were being generous, the late Pleistocene, so about 10,000, 12,000 years ago, they're going to run out of worker drones. Um, and uh, I think. Every time you read a headline such as, where have all the good men gone, you're essentially reading something along the lines of, where have all the worker drones gone? Well, they're going their own way, folks, uh, women in particular. And uh, quite frankly, most of us have reached the point of no return. The veil has been peeled back, and the game is up. We know what's going on, and, you know, I think it's, it's ultimately uh, up to you to adjust your behavior, because... We're, we're done dancing. We're done dancing the dance. It's it's over. The dance is over. The fat lady su uh, has sung, and quite frankly, it's just a question of time till everything implodes as more and more men wake up. And I see it all the time. I see it on comments. I even see it see it in occasion in real life. I have so many friends who might not be men going their own way, but they recognize a deeply, deeply dissatisfying uh, role that they have and the expectations put on them. And um, they just need to reach the breaking point. And it's not pleasant, but eventually they will. Um, I think all of us have some recognized at a very young age, some middle age, but we're all, everyone gets there, I think, eventually. Everyone who's, who's intelligent enough, cognizant enough, and uh, you know something is amiss, you know something's wrong. And I wouldn't be surprised if in Korean, South Korean society implodes much, much sooner because men aren't happy there. Um, and yeah, the collective forces are pretty strong there, but uh, it's not working. Uh, and it's not working in the West either. You know, anyway, that's what I had to say. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll be trying to post some more videos in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for watching.